All right, I'm just gonna pop back out to my camera here. Now at this point, you might be wondering, where's the object manager? Where's an outline of what is going on in my scene? And how do I manipulate the hierarchies and parenting of objects in my scene? And you, uh, there is a thing, uh, and by default on the build layout, if you're in the build layout, it's over here on the left hand side. You see this little arrow, this little kind of bar highlights when you kind of put your uh, mouse towards the edge of the window and a little arrow pops out. And if you click on it, you get this thing that looks like an object manager. But you'll find out pretty quickly that if you're trying to do parenting relationships or grouping, you can't really manipulate anything in here. You can use it to navigate around to the different parts of your scene like for example, going to the matte context and seeing your different materials or going to the out context to see your render uh, settings. Um, you, you, you can see that these different uh, areas in your scene exist, but you can't really manipulate them the way you would in something like Cinema 4D or Maya or whatever. So what you can do, though, is, you know, kind of create groups and stuff over here. So things that I want to address are how you can create groups um, and move groups together, um, you know, and it's sort of like a subfolder like relationship and also how to deal with things like uh, radio buttons and visibility with rendering. Suppose for a second that I want to, let's just turn on a couple of these objects, like the glass and the paint and the pyro surface, for example. Let's suppose I want to actually take a couple of these objects and group them together. So I want to grab the glass and these uh, three items and I want them to be a group. One way we could do that is uh, we could uh, put them into a subnet. So if you select all three of them, like so, and then go up to this little icon that looks like a box and click it, you can see that it creates this thing called the subnet. If you dive inside, our objects are sitting there nicely. And if we jump back up and look over at our tree view, you can see that it's created this subnet with our objects underneath it. Now I can't like pull these objects out or anything. I still can't manipulate them over here, but we've kind of effectively created a group here. And if I select my handle right here, you can see that we can move all those objects as a group. Um, so I can just kind of move them around like so by selecting this subnet and, you know, translating them. So we get an extra transform there, and that's sort of how we can move those objects around as a group. I'm just going to reset this. And if we want to get these objects out of the group, we can right click on this and say actions, extract contents, and boom, we're right back where we started. And we can individually grab our objects and move them around uh, with the handle like so. I'm just going to grab all of these and zero out their transforms by going to uh, the translate and typing in 000 to get them all back to where, wherever they were. Now there's another method of kind of doing a parent child like thing and that involves wiring nodes together. So if I grab my poly render right now and I just rotate it, you can see that it's rotating by itself. If I wanted to bring the glass and the paint splash with it and everything like that, what I can do is I can actually just wire these together like so. So now when they're all wired together, if I rotate the poly render, it brings those objects along with it. Now if I unwire them, I'm just doing this by holding down the Y key, which creates a little scissors, and holding that Y key down and dragging through those node connections causes them to break. You can see that those objects kind of pop back to where they were in the first place. If I undo that real quick, select these objects, and then say uh, keep position when parenting, like that, and then I unwire them. So now when I move my poly render, those objects stay where they were when we unparented them. So it kind of is a way to get their um, transforms. It, it kind of kind of a way to parent things and have them be unparented without returning to their original position. And if we look at these objects now, you can see that it has um, created, you know, they've inherited that transform wherever we left them at. If I just select all these nodes again, go to rotate, right click and say revert to defaults, those um, nodes all kind of those those trans transforms all go back to where they were in the first place and poly render has been rotated i'm just going to zero that out as well so poly render is back to where it is where it was in the first place suppose you're in a situation where you want to do a kind of a radio button like behavior where you want to actually not see your object in the viewport but you still want it to render Right here, what we're left with is just this display flag that kind of just turns objects on and off in the viewport, but it also turns them on and off in our render. But on our objects, we actually have an option to uh, kind of 
turn the visibility off in the viewport, but allow it to still render. We just don't have a flag for it. So the way we get to that is we actually um, select our objects. Suppose we want to turn the poly render off. We just want to turn the poly render off in the viewport, but also but allow it to still render. We just go over here to this uh, render tab right here, and then where it says display as, right now it's set to full geometry. We just set that to hidden. And so now you can see it's hidden from the viewport, but if I open up the Redshift render view, let's go to Redshift menu, open render view, and click render, you can see that it's still rendering there. So not visible in the viewport, but still visible in the render. If I turn the flag off, It'll become invisible, but it's still there. And then just remember, if something is not visible, you're wondering where it is, you can uh, just go to this display as and set it back to full geometry, and you're right back where you started from. Cool.